Now, before getting too invested in your project, you're going to want to make sure that when you're all done, it's going to be street legal and that you can actually drive your electric motorcycle. So to start off, when you get the motorcycle you're going to convert to electric, make sure you get a title because without the title, you really don't own the motorcycle. Now, this is one of those things that varies a lot from state to state, uh, one country to another. So you really have to find out what your local laws are. For example, in my state, I was able to buy a cycle frame without the title as long as I had the bill of sale and then sent in some additional paperwork. It was a little bit more red tape, not too much, but the important thing is that I knew ahead of time that I could legally buy and register the motorcycle and get a new title without having the original one in the first place. So check to see exactly what you need in your area. At a bare minimum though, you do need a bill of sale. So when you buy your motorcycle frame, make sure you get the seller to sign something. It doesn't have to be real fancy, but make sure you get uh, the date, uh, the seller's name, your name, um, I so-and-so sell a year make and model motorcycle, put the VIN right on there so that all the information is there so that you will be able to get a title when you're all done. Next thing you're going to want to be able to do is register the motorcycle. As long as you have the right information with the bill of sale, the title, or at least being able to get a title, you'll be able to register the motorcycle. Chances are you're probably going to want to actually uh, register and get the plates for the cycle before doing the conversion to electric. Typically motorcycles don't have to go in for uh, emissions or smog testing, but there may be something else you're required to do in your area, perhaps a safety check or something similar. And it's probably going to be a little bit more straightforward if you just take the motorcycle in as it is. Another thing you're going to want to check is uh, the VIN number. Now the VIN on a motorcycle is right up in front, up by the steering here, and then typically that VIN number also matches up with uh, the number that's stamped on both the engine and the transmission. Now you do want to have those because in some cases uh, you may be required to show that number uh, to a, a police or a safety or a security officer just to prove that the parts aren't stolen. So in my case, since I originally had bill of sale but not the title, as part of the paperwork, I did have to take, take the motorcycle into a police station and show that information. Now if I had uh, sold off the engine and transmission before going through all the paperwork, could have been trouble. So the main thing is plan ahead, make sure that you've got the paperwork so that you'll be able to legally get your motorcycle on the road. Now, once it's registered and you're getting your plates, you might want to take a look at getting some special plates. Typically, motorcycle uh, registration and plates are less expensive than the equivalent car plates, but there's some other special types. Uh, for example, uh, you could get collector plates, or in my area, we have hobbyist plates available. Now, what's neat about hobbyist plates is that you also only pay for them once. You don't have to pay the annual renewal on the, regist the registration of the motorcycle every year. So it saves you money in the long run. But hobbyist plates are specifically for hot rods and other modified vehicles. That's the exact appropriate category for this project. So on my cycle, I have hobbyist plates. They cost double to get compared to regular plates, but there's no annual renewal after that. So it saves me some money. But you do have to keep in mind there's, there's a few limitations as well. In this case, I can't legally ride the motorcycle in January. Well, around here, it's nothing but snow all over the roads in January, so I'm okay with that. The other thing you want to make sure is that you can insure your electric motorcycle. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go talk to a full-service insurance agent. A full-service agent is a real live human being that you're going to be able to talk to, explain your situation, tell him or her exactly what you want to do. Be completely truthful, open, and honest about it. To get the insurance and, and not, not run into any troubles later, a full-service insurance agent needs to understand what it is that you're doing. Basically, I called up my insurance agent, told her what I wanted to do, and she said, so basically, you're going to modify your vehicle a little bit, 
it's not going to go as far. It's probably not going to go as fast and you want insurance on it, right? I said, yeah. Well, guess what? She had absolutely no problem with it whatsoever. I've got insurance on my motorcycle. It's a reasonable rate. Um, in my case, it's through Progressive, but a full service insurance agent will be able to compare insurance between different companies and also check on any gotchas. Uh, sometimes you might be able to get a better price through one company, but there may be odd limitations in the fine print. Uh, a really unusual one on mine is I cannot legally deliver pizza with my electric motorcycle. Again, I'm okay with that, but uh, you just have to be aware of any of that kind of fine print. Now, the other thing you want to keep in mind is a motorcycle is different than a car. It's different than a bicycle. This is actually my first motorcycle. If you also don't have a background in motorcycles, learn everything you can about them. Here's a great little book, The Complete Idiot's Guide to Motorcycles. And it sounds like it might be you know, a little basic, but there's actually a lot of really good information in here. Go to the library, go to the bookstore, get yourself a good book and start reading through it just on all the basics of motorcycles. Now, some of the things won't necessarily apply. You can kind of skip the chapter on engines but there's a lot of great information in here about riding, safety, all sorts of great stuff. You also want to make sure to get the repair manual for your motorcycle. For example, a Haynes or a Chilton's. Uh, in this case, I have the Haynes Kawasaki 400 and 440 Twins uh, repair manual right here. Um, again, I can skip the chapter on engine and transmission, but this tells me all about uh, the wire harness, um, tire pressure, uh, chain alignment, all those other things that you still need to know. I also have here the Kawasaki service manual. Uh, this is a similar book and even though it's missing the cover, there's a lot of great information in here and this is the, uh, the manual actually from the manufacturer. Sometimes there's different information between the manufacturer's book and the aftermarket book. So if you can get both, it's nice to have both. For some more general information on electric motorcycles, there are a few good books out there. Uh, I read through a couple of them. Here's two that I could recommend. Uh, one is Build Your Own Electric Motorcycle by Carl Vogel. It's a pretty thick book. There's a lot of great overall general information on electric motorcycles in here. If you want to learn just all sorts of information on different types of lead acid batteries, uh, calculations for amperage and wattage and speed, this book is really full of that. In terms of the actual building of electric motorcycle, it's a little slim. It's really just about the last chapter that, that gives you the real specifics on doing it. But overall background information, this book is fantastic. On the other hand, for a real world, hands-on, let's go out and build the electric motorcycle, um, I really think you can't beat Secrets of El Ninja. Now, this is a deceptively skinny book uh, with just a simple spiral binding on it. It's only about 70 some pages, but the information in here uh, is really fantastic. So Secrets of El Ninja is really great for the actual hands-on building of the electric motorcycle. And here it covers specifically the conversion of a Kawasaki Ninja sport bike, but the same information is gonna apply to any type of motorcycle. In fact, that's another thing you might wanna check with your insurance agent. You may be surprised that the size of the engine might have a significant uh, change in the cost of your insurance. And if you're just gonna take that engine out to replace it with an electric motor anyways, does it really matter if you're using a Kawasaki 250cc or 1200cc? Maybe not, as long as you still have enough room for your motor and your batteries. So again, when you're working with a full service insurance agent, that's the kind of thing you wanna check on. So again, make sure that you've got uh, your bill of sale, your title, so that you can get your cycle registered, get the plates, get the insurance that you need to legally ride, and get any background information that you can. The more info you can have before you start a project, the better it's gonna go for you.